Aloha and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Texar here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey everybody, Aloha. And we have a uh, longtime friend, Aran Agman, who Aram, is our, guest, brother? Is our hey. guest today. Welcome. Nice to Thank see you. you. Well, Aran and I go nice back a long way. You can only tell by me. You look young, I still look old. But anyway, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. And uh, we're going to talk about kinds of things that uh, Iran has been involved with in the form of network infrastructure, uh, Cyber Pizza, which you started, Seattle Council, which you were one of the big players on. You're also a radio guy, not, not in KSSK no, radio, antenna radio antenna guy. you got all kinds of things happening. That you're, ham radio, you're a ham radio guy who I think I used one time when we had a tsunami happening when I was with the city. And we were tracking you because you were the only guy still up and running. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of the few guys that was still up and running. So he's got a lot of experience in the in the in the tech field, and, and give us a good sense on that. Right on. So, and then and I pizza. got. I thought we were talking about. Pizza. And then we got. I tell we tell electronic pizza. He started started electronic I know. pizza. Everybody we, wants him to go get it going and again. And we got to get it going again. We need so electronic this is, pizza. It's part of what we're going to do. Text today. us if you would love a, a electronic, electronic pizza. pizza. If you like, hey, I mean, tweet us. Sorry, I he you had me on a, many a time at that event. It, you know, putting on That's true. things and, and such like. You're, you're an exceptional speaker. So. Oh gee, <laughs> well, <Wow>. I'm, <laughs> I'm an exception <laughs> to the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's how uh, it is. You always put out a yeah. very interesting program uh, and get people in. You, enthusiastic and you got the University of Hawaii to um, donate space, right? Yes. You got um, park, free parking for the people that could come in, a whole bunch of things and so on. So I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, yeah. but you did a lot of good stuff. But give us a little bit of background, because you're Israeli, right? Am That's I, correct. See, I got a pretty yeah, good guy. Yeah, we got to figure out how you, guy, we, right? gotta, so we I, always <laughs> go through the history. So I need to teach you about Shaloha. Shaloha, right? Shaloha. 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 Like, <laughs> is, is there a Shaka too? Shaka? <laughs> That would be the next one. That's the next one. Right? That's something with prayer or something, if I recall. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, you, you, you um, uh, came to the U.S. when and hey, you ended up in Hawaii. How did this all happen? So, so I came to the U.S. in 72. Okay. Uh, in, in Israel, when I grew up, we were all expected to become MDs. Okay. And I was one of those kids who would faint at the sight of blood. Okay. Ah. And always played with Erector sets. <laughs> One day, a postcard came in the mail from the Youth Center of Tel Aviv, okay. inviting me to an amateur radio club. I had no idea what it was, okay. but I was really fascinated by the fact that when mm. they, they, they completed to tell us about all the technology and teach us about Morse code, at the end of the evening, they invited us to listen to them as they were talking with people around the around world. Around the world. So this is a radio club. In, in what, Tel Aviv. In, in, in what in year? Tel Aviv. In that what was, year? That was 1965. Okay, in 1965, Dude, there code. was no internet, right? There was oh, no, internet. no internet. And, and you were on a uh, ham radio system. Correct. Right, talking to people all over the world. And what, turning little dials. Exactly. <laughs> and, and what really grabbed my attention was that they talked with the South Pole. Oh! oh. Wow. From Tel Aviv, that's awesome. Yeah, I thought that was so cool. Nothing could measure up with with that. That's pretty, so, so, and the, so we had a guest on the show, Joe Ferraro. Do you know Joe Ferraro? I do. Yeah, so Joe, you know, his architectural firm is responsible for the development of that station in the South Pole. Interesting. So, so yes. interesting. So you get, you get, you get trapped into talking, this. He was probably talking, he was probably talking to Joe. Yes. <laughs> you get trapped into this in 1965 and you're talking to the South Pole from Tel Aviv. Amazing. Which I is one that. day before, well, who knows where, what, how it changes in days from, from there. So you got into ham radio. Yes. And, and, and I actually used to talk with Hawaii in my childhood. Okay. Oh. And conditions were very, very good. I used to be able to hear Katashi Nose here. Who? Was a Katashi Nose was a professor at the University of oh, Hawaii. Oh, Katashi Nose was a professor. Okay. Yes. And he was an avid ham, probably the most well-known ham in the world. Really? Oh, yes. And I, uh, ever since that, I adopted the, the aspiration to live in a tropical island <laughs> and leverage the ocean as part of my antenna system to okay. be able to do ham radio from the beach. Okay, so, so now, so here you are in Tel Aviv, and then, so how did you, uh, don't tell me on a boat and a plane, but how did you yeah. get to UH? <laughs> <laughs> not UH, how did you get to Hawaii, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, <laughs> a couple steps, so I, I got really interested in amateur radio contesting, and what makes the biggest difference in amateur radio success is antennas. Okay. So I, after I finished my military... Uh, which I, was a requirement. Which was a requirement. Yeah. I actually went to a military school where I, I went through an accelerated program in, 
electronics and communications that mm. set me up so I could that would that's what I would do during my military service. Okay. And and I got so interested in antennas. I worked in antenna research. Okay. And I, I and I actually decided to come to the U.S. to study antenna engineering. And so back in those days, though, antenna yes. research and and for our viewers, if you think about antenna, you're thinking, well, what antenna? But you drive around all over this state, right? Yes. Our cell phone towers, yes. the antennas that are involved with that, uh, the military antennas, exactly. uh, the antennas that we use. Um, we don't get. How come we don't get serious radio here? Is it the it's the satellite, right? I, I think it doesn't fit into the footprint. In the, the footprint of the yeah, antenna. Yeah. But we have antennas all over, and there's yes. a, and so the fact that there's a technology behind antennas. Yes. Sure was. Back then it was dipole, right? Like they were just. Well, dipole is the basic antenna yeah. that is used. Okay. Yeah. Actually, antenna antenna engineering is not a black si black magic. It is a science. Okay. It's very heavily mathematical. Yeah. So it uses differential equations and today computer models. Now, is there a lot of people? I don't see a lot of ads in the paper for like um, antenna um, engineering. Uh, engineering. Wait, antenna. Well, actually, here is the interesting news: okay. the University of Hawaii in 2005 okay. was able to attract a professor from Utah, and I attracted him to move his program that at that point was 25 years old. Okay. And now the University of Hawaii is rated within the top five universities in the, in the country for antenna engineering. For, so university, so here we go, here yes. we go. Okay. The, another yes. another secret. Yes. Why do we keep all this stuff secret? <laughs> <laughs> it's something about Hawaii, and, and I think that's the reason why I started the electronics pizza. Okay. Is that we all assume that there is nothing here and yet there is a lot happening here. So the, the, the ability to connect people, right. and when people are connected, just like in this conversation, we're right. finding about that. So, so what was your vision for electronic pizza? I mean, you, you, what did you want to accomplish with that? What, what I wanted to do was I wanted uh, to be able to create new companies that would emerge out of it okay. by just putting talent and interesting people to talk with each other. Okay. Well, yeah, and you, uh, was Courtney? Courtney joined us Courtney along Brown. the way. Courtney Brown. Right. And he has helped a lot. Okay. So yes. you guys, so you started, and you were in this electronic pizza for how many years? 28 yeah, years. Yeah, because remember Devin Phillips and all the Linux guys, and they, they were there. I was, I was down there. Uh, the electronics pizza was formed in 19... Uh, 80, 84, 85. 84, 85. So electronic, and so, wow. so, so, you know, realizing that the electronic pizza was, um, a lot of students, a lot of students would come to this event. Uh, a lot of. Unfortunately, not. Was it this really? The, oh, the, I thought the, it was. No, well, everybody the, looked young to me. Uh, everybody looked <laughs> young to you, but unfortunately, <laughs> this is something that that again is a challenge in, in our community. Okay. Is to get the the students engaged. We saw more more professors, okay. but a lot of professionals who were involved in. in yeah, there was pros. I, for some reason, though, I thought that we were you. So that again, we were trying one to, of the reasons. Even we we offered free to free pizza to students. And I know. We still were not yeah, able to. I remember there was there were pizzas all lined up outside, and and yeah. you get all free, and it's still it's still. The it, the idea was that how do you get people in this community to open up? Yeah, and and, oh and, and when you bring food together, yeah, then amazing things happen. Right, ah. and, and 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 so the electronics pizza sort of set the the standard for other organizations that learn that the, you, you can grow membership and you can grow content. Yeah, well, yeah, with, and you always had assistant. great presenters and people that brought in innovative yes. new technologies and different ways to go in the career. Speaking of new technologies, we have this segment on the show called You Know Got One Tech Job. So, you know, this is, these are people that should be in tech and not yes. quite how to get there. Yes. So we have, this is the one that, that we, people send us this one, send these things. This one, I like this one. Error 404, how many people have gotten that on the website, looking yeah. at their website? Error 404, road not open, a road, road not found. <laughs> <laughs> on a road found. <laughs> so now they would need a, a, if they had a tower, a radio tower there, Stealth radio tower there. They could have, you know, got that created instead of this. You know, you know, you know, got one tech job with well, that kind of stuff. Let that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so here we go. With electronic pizza. You've been, um, and we still haven't talked about your business, and we'll do that probably in the second half. But um, so electronic pizza, it kind of faded away about a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, and uh, and you did it every. 
They, they, was it every month so or every week? Well, we, we, we started with the second Tuesday of every month. Okay. And then uh, the, there, there were additional pizza meetings that, that came aboard. One was the business pizza that was instrumental in ah. expediting competitive telecommunications in the state. Okay. By two years, we, we estimate. Okay. Uh, we had inventor's pizza. Okay, I remember that. The yes. new product, the, 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 yes. the startup kind of persons. There, were, there, there was an inventor's group in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, the leadership was, was experiencing some health issues. So the, the group was fading away. Okay. So we were able to get it together. But we've had, and you know, really so interesting. There's been a lot. There's been a lot of things that have happened in Hawaii that end up losing their legs for some reason. But 28 years is not actually short legs. I mean, yeah. it's a long time. Yeah, and um, there's a lot of interest to to revive it. Yeah, people are missing it. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking with the things that are going on with the hackathons that you were involved with today. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's, um, there's there's just it's happening a lot. It's happening a lot. I think the key will be we we well now we have connections now at the university. We both know the president and you know. Actually, he used to come to some of those. Absolutely. David yeah. Lazner would come yeah. to some of those. Yeah. Um, cyber like, pizza? Yeah. yeah. The, like, and he's like, a, pizza. Well, it, cyber pizza was another one that came out exactly. of that Exactly. So, so cy when, when the internet became big, cyber pizza became the second. So it was like the third Tuesday of every month. Okay. okay. And, and, and uh, eventually we realized that anything was tied into to cyber. So... We, we we moved from the electronics pizza to cyber to pizza. I think cyber that's pizza. That's when I that's really yeah. it. And I so, can, but yeah. you think about, so maybe the thing is, though, and we've talked about this before, is that there's just so many events. Yes. It's hard to get to all of the events. Um, and I, w I wish in a lot of ways that all the different organizations like ITMA, HC, HICTA, HICD, which you were yeah, involved Hick, with. Yeah, Hick, Hick, Square, I wish they would all get Saka, together and yeah. just have you know, one month meeting with everybody together. I mean, I think yes. it would be a lot better. I think it would be very convenient, except I think there are certain organizations like ISSA that are very focused on network security right. and tend to be very technical. But how do you well, draw the difference anymore? I mean, Ron, we've uh, been doing this for so long. Absolutely. I mean, where, where's the line? Where's the wall? Yeah, well, I think, I think network security challenges have, have created that, that, that line where there are certain people that still need to focus on the, on the charter of the organization, of the right. charter of the business, okay. which is, which is the, running the applications in IT, okay. and another organization that need to keep them safe. To keep them safe. And it, add a, add in, uh, w what I may see uh, coming up is, is the coming together, the integration of the folks that do network performance mm -hmm. and network security. Right. And there's been, they have been together and they went away due to the fear that, you know, how can you trust somebody who builds your <laughs> network? Right. Yeah. And so uh, we, we've seen those cycles. We've in seen those cycles. That's true. And, That's and, true. and so was, I, I imagine it's going to ping pong back and I, forth. I, I, you I know. think you're absolutely right. So yeah. let's kind of hold that network because you do a lot of stuff on the network side. Yes. I didn't even, we, I got so interested in this, I never even did the news, which we'll do when I come back. Okay. And we'll go get Angus. Okay. He's in his suit and tie again today. I saw him. He nice. must be out there. I think he's campaigning for mayor. Anyway, so we'll be back in just a minute. And thank you for watching the budget. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Aloha. We invite you to join us on our Keys to Success show, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Our goal for Keys to Success is to provide a platform for professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. We have incredible guests from all walks of life, including politicians, successful business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs and authors. As this is a live show, there are live mess ups as well, which are fun to watch. Aloha and we'll see you on Thursday. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. 
But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Everybody, welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Thanks for joining us. We went down and dug Angus up off the beach. Always with something entertaining for us. Angus, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. How hey, you doing there, dude? All Good right, to man. Good to see you. Good to see you. We got a wee guy from the middle of the planet, the other side of the nation, flash you this side of the world, from Tel Aviv. It's pretty cool. I've never been there. He came here on a ham radio wave. Yeah, yeah I, I came here on a hamburger. <laughs> anyway, big to have you here. Well, so, anyway, you know, everybody asks you where you're wearing a suit and a tie. I'm thinking of running for mayor, but unfortunately I never got my nomination in on time. So next year I'll run for mayor, or I'll run away from the mayor. Let's see who wins. <laughs> anyway, I got a wee, uh, you know, I, I do, no, no Scottish word of the week, but I found another great Thank Scottish you. sign. You know, I, you know, I've been looking for these great signs. Look at this sign. Here, look, look, go see. This is a sign from a sign maker. <laughs> best prices in best Scotland. Prices in, look at the best prices in Scotland. <laughs> you know, he uses a piece of reclaimed wood, but he ran out of ink on his pen, I think. Anyway, and he might have spelled Scotland wrong. No, no, he got that right. But anyway, <laughs> there's a great sign maker. If you need him, there's that phone number. So okay. So yes, we'll put him up on Twitter. I didn't think you'll find him anymore. Anyway, that was, that's that's the sign guy. And I got a gadget because we were talking about electronic pizza. You know, oh, and I wanted, I wanted you be have a, electronic pizza? I wanted to be a guest on that show. Next time he starts it all up because I found I got a new invention for him. It's a pizza holder. What? How's that? It's pizza. Your, like you put your pizza. <laughs> so pizza when you pouch. take your lunch with you, you it on your neck. You put your ID badge on it and you got your lunch. And it's electronic pizza. Electronic pizza. So that's what I'm going to be wearing next year when I go to electronic, when Iran starts the electronic pizza again, right? You're going to start it again. You promise me that. Yes. yes. Say yes. Yes. All right. Good. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, that's, what, that's all I got today. You guys enjoy what's going on with the show. And remember, like I always say, let your wing gig free wherever you be. Aloha. Wow. Angus, that was, a, that was quick, man. Angus brought us some electronic pizza. Good job. Uh, on the security minute today, I just got a real brief thing to say. I saw in the news that um, some guys from the airport finally got convicted. They were down there. Which airport? Our airport. Okay. They were no down way. there taking bribes, doing some illegal stuff. And we had a presentation earlier this year, and I wanted to talk about this because a lot of you, you folks that are working in the transportation industry and maybe you're taking money to do something that you shouldn't be taking money to do. And the important thing you need to realize is that those people that are paying you to, to pass, pass packages along or whatever it is you may be doing, you never know when those guys may be influenced by terrorists. And next thing you know, you're putting bombs on those planes instead of just passing whatever kind of materials you're passing. So pay attention to your community. Do your job well. Have some ethics out there. Uh, it scares me airport insiders, right? This, yeah. this is worrisome. The insider threat's big for us, and thought I'd throw that, that thought out there for those of you that might be getting tempted by money. You know, get another job. Get yeah. a second job. Well, yeah, yeah. Get Do real, something get, else. Get a real job, like no tech job. Get a tech job. Get it, yeah. Get a be tech a job. Be a sign guy in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy yeah, enough. Sign. You know, get some paint, you know. It can't be that hard. <laughs> Based on the competition. <laughs> competition for signage is not that Call hard. Call Iran, Scotland. he'll hook you up with something yeah, in tech, you know. Ham radio in, and we, we're all set. Well, I'm telling you, man. We'll keep the news going, and then we'll... we'll We'll jump back in. Okay. So, so uh, along the same same lines. So, um, and I got to thank Palbox because they give me all this stuff because they're always in this business. And Palbox, by the way, is a, a, a Hawala Grevy who's was been on the show. You know him. I think yeah. he was our first guest. He was one of our first guests as well. As, so, guess what they were doing today? Hawala Grevy and his team, who moved to San Francisco, um, were giving away uh, five hundred spam musubis right out on the street. So they, they got they got picked up by a top investment uh, organization. They call them the Top Five Hundred, and they're one of the, the companies that's been uh, not named in Huffington Post and got picked up by them. So today yep. to celebrate, they went out and were handing out five hundred spam musubis. Five hundred spam musubis in downtown musubis. San Francisco. And the governor shout out on Twitter. The, yeah, the, I saw that. The governor of Good job, Cal
healthcare records wow. of 105,000 patients. Wow. I mean, this is the kind of stuff. And that's the stuff Hawala and Powbox helps with, actually, because he encrypts all that and information it's the kind of for stuff these kind that, of groups. So. That Iran knows about because of the stuff that you do in the network security side. So come, we'll kind of transition into that then. So we talked about electronic pizza. We want to get that going. But also, you do some unique things in all the you're, yeah. you're a value added reseller in a number of interesting products. Yes. Com test. So uh, I, I came into this industry from the test equipment side. Okay. Uh, when intelligent machines converse with each other, they exchange messages in packets. Okay. In the control and supervision of the packet, uh, the, the, there is a hierarchical process that uh, the technology I'm involved with pays attention to that. So it pays so attention to the, the way that way that we as as pieces of technology commun talk to each other. Exactly. Okay. So it, it, it monitors the communications between the different entities and then it's able to report on vital statistics, but at the same token, it's also able to diagnose and report on symptoms and diagnosis of, of issues that are associated with the performance. So if I was to take an example, like, so obviously this Ukrainian hacker that got into a network of this group, if they had the, some of the right pieces of technology on their system, they would have known this was happening. Exactly. Well, and, and, and here's another thing. We typically know about issues after they occur. Right. Okay? So the technology today allows us to record what, ha what happened, and then we don't have to spend a lot of time and get into what I call religious mode, praying that the, that the problem is going to reoccur. Instead, we are able to just dial in into the period of time that was leading to the problem, see how the... the problem executed, and then what was the impact. So if there was an attack, you can see uh, the reconnaissance, how the, the, the intruder was taking control of the network, right. and what was the impact of that. So, so you can use it for forensics, not just for taking yeah, a look at it, performance. And the reconnaissance piece he's talking about is really big today, because everybody's starting, we're trying to really get a good understanding for what the, the vector, right, the attack vector, because they're new. So right. we, know, we know the old one. We already know the one that we found, so how they get in. But these guys are creative, right? So they're always treating new ways. And, of course, Black Hat was this week, and there's several new attacks on TLS and several things that were shown this week at Black Hat. So, at Black you Hat. Know. And then we, we've got the guys that are turning on each other. You said something else. Yeah, wasn't that week. awesome? So we got the, the ransomware guys now who are, who are actually attacking exposing, each other. Exposing, exposing each other's each keys. Other's keys. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, so we just, again, <laughs> put them out of business, we right? call them wetware. When the humans get involved, right, we start really, <laughs> we, the wetware gets involved. It goes yeah. one way of communication. So I'll show you and then they'll show yeah. me. So, but I mean, I find this interesting because how many companies do you think in this town do not have the right... Um, uh, technologies in place to be managing and monitoring what's going on in their networks. Mm, most. A lot? I think a lot. You yeah. think yeah. more than half? I, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So. Wait, wait. Not, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you maybe not saw that on camera. He said that with a smile. Wouldn't, I mean, you, <laughs> wouldn't you say that outside of the regulated industries, most all are, are really not up to well, speed? Well, I, I would say that the medium size and the large corporation in, in, in town are starting to pay attention yeah. to this. Are starting to pay attention. Are starting to deploy What do you mean starting to pay? Shouldn't they be paying attention a long time ago? Uh, You've been doing this for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you don't want to get people annoyed I, or, or piss off or something, but still. <laughs> Maybe we should. Well, I, I, I think it's, it's a transition that, that, it, that involves a, a significant investment in learning how to do it and then in cost to to, to buy the technology and, and to deploy it. Right. And education, uh, right? You know, the, uh, board, the, the boards don't know. They don't fund the C-suite that's asking for this. Because right. yes. the network guys are knocking, going, boss, we got to do something. And he's like, eh, tell you, know, write me an ROI for it, right? Yeah. People, so, it's hard. How do you, you know, what's the, how do you justify it? Well, and Ron, you said something in interesting too. It's like, you know, like, and I think I like this piece is that, you know, the, the, the technology, the, the equipment is talking to each other in its language. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. And so it's not like you and I can look at it and say, well, well we that's... Well, you can, but we. But I can't you need Ron's equipment. Yeah, I can't look at it and go say, "Oh, off the bat, this is oh, there." Oh, yeah, this not is where at you all. Need some of your monitoring and tracking right. stuff. Packet yes. inspection. Yeah. Well, you see, the traditional way that the most corporation approached security had to do with deploying firewalls, intrusion detection. The traditional. Right. It, it turns. That's, and that's still today. It's still today. Yeah. It still has a real important role. Uh, however. Uh, it, it is difficult to a verify that it works, 
and and until you you, you well, until you you get hit penetration yes, test, but yeah, I test. actually am involved with a, a technology that is made in my hometown that that actually what it does it it it's able to create a model that replicates the network and the network security assets okay. and then it's able to uh, to run vulnerabilities against it and also compliance issues so it's a so it can, so it's validate whether so is it preventative? Is it more of a preventative, it's, or is it an after the fact? No, it's preventative. Okay, so so, so you, you you you, what you're doing, you're engaging in auditing your network all the time without impacting your production. Okay, network. so here's an important thing. So your website is www.comtest.com. You have a whole plethora of technologies that you and your firm can enable uh, organizations to use to be preventive. Yes maintenance on their network infrastructure from a security standpoint. But even, a, even reaching towards predictive, I would say. Yeah. He's looking, looking, yeah, to looking the, ahead yeah. of time, you can, you can, you can predict. You know, I, yeah, you're no. not going to believe this. We're almost out of time. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's related to the predictive. Okay. Uh, the predictive is not only for security, but also uh, for, for being able to predict what is the capacity that you need. Oh, is your network is sized your, correctly? Is your network sized correctly? Okay. Yeah, late, it's called latency issues or quality of service. Late, and late, latencies and quality of service. And then also the ability to do a what-if scenario, like deploying a new application and, and modeling the, 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 the amount impact. of traffic that it would generate and how would that impact the ability of the network to, to sustain performance or or do you need to change to change, change what's yes. going on so there's a lot there's a lot going on here and i yes. hate to rush you but we are I, I we are it. we are <laughs> out of we are out of time but you know ron is you've given it you've given our, our 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 viewers some interesting perspective on things that they should be looking at when they're sitting on their all their computers on their network and what's what's going or not going on there so but uh, um all of our guests get a um autograph so look i'm honored yeah I, well yeah no, i don't want you so what Sony number thing. is it this is number 80 man <laughs> number wow. 80 number 80 so you can go out and now start with all of our previous guests and see if you can like you know buy a bunch and get a like um, what do they call those beanie babies? <laughs> I'll get a, a hibachi <laughs> cup, cup collection. <laughs> Some are out there in Pokemon Go. You've got uh, Solo Cup Go right there for you. Thank you. Anyway, thank you for being on Hello. the show today. My Thanks pleasure. So, you know, ham radio too. Look up ham radio. Um, look up antennas. Look up security on your networks. Cyber pizza. We got to try and get that going again. So that's I think a, an important community event that we got to have. Let's get, do it. Have happening. I want to thank Zuri and Nick once again for helping us get through another Jay. fascinating at 5:30 minutes. And as we always say at the end of every show, and I never queued you up on this, but just follow us on one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing?